The U.S. dollar is in the driver's seat as we head towards the weekly close, though at the same time, this week's round of U.S. dollar gains have been mild. On Thursday, however, those mild dollar gains did translate to the buck reaching the highest levels against the euro since May 2017 after the initial hit of upgraded dovishness from the ECB decision inspired a round of euro selling. Still, even with the new yearly low, the euro wasn't all that comfortable trading lower, making its way back to Thursday opening levels into the Thursday close. Overall, the ECB left rates on hold and delivered a message packaged with a willingness to cut rates further, which was a message that shouldn't have come as much of a surprise to the market. On the data side, German IFO readings certainly didn't help the euro's cause after coming in below forecast. Over in the UK, the pound was dealing with ongoing Brexit worry, taking in the latest headlines of the EU rejecting Boris Johnson's demands to eliminate the Irish border backstop, along with Johnson's comments that he was committed to delivering Brexit come October 31st and would be turbocharging preparation for a no-deal scenario. The Australian dollar hasn't been feeling great this week and was knocked back on Thursday after RBA Low talked about the possibility for additional rate cuts. We also saw the same sentiment come through with respect to dovish sentiment around the RBNZ outlook, which hurt the New Zealand dollar this week. But again, overall, the dollar is in the driver's seat but hasn't made any meaningful moves that would suggest it's going to be continuing the broad uptrend in place since mid-2018 just yet. On the U.S. side, the House passed a two-year budget deal that will suspend the debt limit until 2021. This wasn't much of a surprise either and will now pass on to the Senate for passage in the upper chamber before moving on to the president for his sign-off. U.S. equities continue to feel good about the investor-friendly market environment after running to yet another record high. However, we continue to recommend exercising caution at current levels with accommodative gestures not as reassuring as they once were, and the U.S. and global economy far more at risk from negative shocks with monetary policy accommodation and government stimulus tools so exhausted. Looking ahead, key standouts on the Friday calendar come out of the U.S. with GDP and core PCE readings due. That's all for now.